Hello everyone and welcome to another game that could have a pretty pretty big impact on the FIDE candidates tournament. It is Ding Liren versus Temo Rajabov. If you remember from yesterday, Ding is currently second in the standings. Uh, here are the standings. If some of you forgot after the uh, after yesterday's round, uh, Ding with six and a half points, uh, trailing uh, uh, by uh, by a point and a half behind Nepo, who is first with eight out of eleven. So uh, a win against um, uh, Rajabov here would go a long way. Uh, as for those of you who still don't know, I will now spoil the result uh, between uh, Yanni Pomchi and Hikaru Nakamura that game ended uh, in a draw so I hope you guys were ready for that and we can even show the game before we show this one because it lasted exactly seven minutes uh, it was the uh, <laughs> the, the famous um, uh, draw that we've seen many many times on this channel just bishop to b5 the Berlin defense of course castles knight captures on e4 d4 knight to d6 going after the bishop and now sacrificing the bishop uh, again uh, it's uh, been seen many times uh, the so-called um, uh, hermit variation uh, we have a4 attacking the knight knight to d4 you have to give up one of the knights captures captures uh, and after queen captures now we play d5 and here after e captures on d6 en passant um, uh, we have a draw by repetition you could of course continue playing this but uh, both of them know that it is nothing you can go something like queen to d3 or, or maybe knight to c3 but here just captures en passant queen captures and now we have this queen e4 check queen e6 queen d4 check queen to d6 uh, and um, uh, just a, a nice repetition here a famous grandmaster draw that um, uh, pretty much everyone uses if they want a quick draw. So a draw uh, was uh, uh, what both uh, Nakamura and uh, Nipponishi were interested in. Uh, Nepo, as he's leading uh, with such a, a huge margin, he doesn't want to risk anything. And Hikaru uh, also doesn't want to risk too much because a second place might also uh, mean a shot at the title since Magnus still has not decided if he's going to play. But okay, that's uh, about that game. Now checking out this one, we even have a nice photo of it there you have it uh, ding with white against rajabo with black uh, rajabo as usual wearing exclusively black he only wears black as, as far as i know and the ding uh wearing uh, the exact same thing he wore yesterday as he won a very nice game so why change anything uh you know uh, chess players are superstitious like that now getting back to the actual game uh, Ding with the white pieces opens with d4 he does not go for the english he goes for the queen's pawn opening knight to f6 we have c4 uh, e6 knight to c3 and now bishop to b4 rajabov goes for the nimzo indian defense and uh, of course you know that uh, good good things happen when uh, that uh, that happens so e3 uh, queen to c2 and d3 are the standard replies. Ding chooses the e3 one. Castles and now bishop to d3. Going for the bishop attack. We have d5. C captures, e captures, and now a3. Already Ding mixes it up a little bit. Knight f to d2 is the uh, to e2 is the standard move here that um, uh, pretty much everyone plays. Uh, but he goes for the somewhat rarer a3. Challenges the bishop. Bishop back to d6 and now queen to c2. Puts pressure on the h7 pawn. We have knight to a6 by Rajabov and now knight g to e2. We have c5 striking in the center and now uh, we have the exact position that already happened but it happened uh, almost 100 years ago, uh, 90 years ago to be exact in 1932 between Paul Joner and uh, Efim Bogolyubov uh, where uh, the game continued with d captures on c5 and Bogolyubov lost that game. But here we have bishop captures on a6 by Ding and it is now already as of move 10 that we have a completely new game. So b captures on a6 rajabov now has um, a shattered pawn structure here but uh, you know from practice that this uh, usually doesn't yield all that much d captures on c5 bishop captures and pawn to b4 grabbing more space preparing to fianchetto the light square dark square bishop uh, bishop to d6 and bishop to b2 and now as rajabov already castled his king to safety he has time to uh well to, to uh, waste one of his doubled pawns to ruin ding's pawn structure on the queen side so a5 and the Ding, of course, doesn't want to do that. He advances the pawn to b5. We have a6, challenging the pawn again, and now pawn to h3, just uh, uh, preventing anything uh, for, from reaching that g4 square. And after the king castles, maybe giving the king a little bit of breeding room. Uh, but of course, uh, not all that relevant as the bishop uh, covers that. But that that's for now. So bishop to d7, uh, developing, putting pressure on that b5 pawn, and only now b captures on a6. We have rook captures, and now rook to d1 one putting pressure on that d5 pawn uh, but now rook to b6 just putting pressure on the bishop here 
And uh, what do you play here? Uh, well, with your king in the center of the board, it would, of course, be uh, a, a very sad idea to go after the pawn here. For example, knight captures rook captures, and now you just allow all sorts of nasty ideas like queen to b8, uh, putting pressure on the bishop, also just uh, controlling this diagonal beautifully. The, the other rook is coming to c8. Uh, so you do not want to do this with your king in the center of the board. Uh, you will not survive this. So bishop to a1 is a move that should be played here. But okay, uh, Ding plays rook to d2 and now it's going to be uh, a little bit difficult for him to play this here Rajabov plays rook to c8 even though the queen belongs on b8 and this rook should come to c8 uh, but even uh, with this uh, uh, well sort of a move wasting position uh, the Ding's position is so bad already that uh, Rajabov can even afford to waste a move like this so queen to c8 uh, we have f3 by Ding also a very very interesting choice here uh, bishop to a1 is is definitely the way to go you have to give up the a3 pawn there's no better way uh, than this and now you castle and you try and play this being down a pawn black has the outside pass pawn and it will be hard but it might be possible however after dings f3 this is now incredibly difficult the e3 pawn has now been weakened uh, and rajabov goes for rook to e8 uh, another interesting try was of course d4 and another interesting try was queen to b8 because the queen really uh, uh, belongs on this b8 square just putting pressure on this bishop here and if uh, for example white castles then rook to c8 just uh, so much pressure uh, and also d4 is very interesting because uh, well the knight really do doesn't want to capture because of bishop to g3 check if you capture with the pawn then you allow rook to e8 also very annoying uh, and if rook captures on, uh, on d4, then queen to b8. Another uh, very very annoying move. Uh, the bishop would be hanging as the rook moved from d2. And uh, you are putting more and more pressure on that g3 square. So here you, you would have to move the bishop. Now comes bishop c5. And this is uh, a terrible, terrible for white, if not lost. Uh, but okay, Rajabov, like we said, went for this rook. The e8 move goes after the weak uh, e3 pawn. And now Ding doesn't defend it with knight to d1 uh, and offers a queen trade, but rather plays king to f2 and this is now becoming a very very interesting uh, uh because knight to d1 uh it is fine, but of course, uh, Rajabov would not trade. You, you would go rook to c6, and still it would be a terrible, terrible position. Uh, there are even tricks like, uh, let's say, queen to b3, a4. You give up the pawn, and after queen captures, now a nice discovery from the bishop, and the rook, queen b3, now bishop to a4, and after queen to d3, now bishop to c2, and you would be forced to give up um, uh, your rook, and of course, the black would be black would be just winning here. So instead, king to f2, and, and there, there are no good moves here unfortunately for ding and now comes queen to b8 finally the queen uh, gets to this um, uh, square that we, we already mentioned but you can see how Rajabo should have played it right away but the ding's position is just so bad uh, even before move 20 that Rajabo can just waste the move and then play queen to b8 again uh, and uh, again terrible terrible position you have to play something like bishop to c1 or queen to c1 uh, but it, it doesn't help uh, Ding played queen to c1 which is uh, which is far far worse than bishop to c1 uh, because now uh, Rajabov has uh, such a spectacular move to end the game but I, I'm not going to show it to you feel free to pause the video and win this game for Rajabov in a most spectacular fashion uh, while I give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on playing any move because pretty much any move wins here uh, like d4. But for those of you who found the absolute uh, brutal uh, rook captures on e3, congratulations, you are an extremely precise player. This is what Rajabov played and now there is no good move for Ding. If, if the king captures, then it's just, uh, uh, well, bishop to c5 check. Uh, you, you really don't have all that many squares. You have to block knight to d4. Now we play queen to e e5 with check king f2 and now bishop captures on d4 you, you just start winning material here uh king to f1 you're gonna play knight to h5 now you threaten knight to g3 checkmate and there is really no good way to to deal with this you have to uh you have to play something like knight to e2 but this is just gonna uh, you know cost you too much material for example rook captures on b2 rook captures bishop captures the queen now has to move uh it's a terrible terrible uh position 
uh, okay, you you could play f4, like offer offer a queen trade here, but uh, uh, anything is just winning here for black. E even a nice queen captures an e2 trick, that's also winning. For example, king captures. Now, uh, first we're gonna capture the queen, and after rook captures on c1, knight captures an f4 check, and uh, still it's two two pieces uh, against the rook. You're up uh, you're up two pawns. Of course, this will be completely winning. Uh, but you can play it much much better than this. This is just to show you that absolutely everything is winning. So instead, after rook captures on e3. Ding tries knight to d1, attacks the rook now this way, and uh, now Ding has 27 minutes on the clock, uh, Rajabov has 53 minutes on the clock, and here he goes back, rook to e8. If Rajabov really wanted to waste time here, he could just play rook captures on e2, even this is in the position, but... Uh, uh, every move that Rajabo plays is just winning, so it's hard to, to force yourself to waste time to just find that uh, move that you know it, it just wins the the the, uh, the most properly, so to, so to say. Uh, but yeah, even this wins because now, for example, if Rook captures on e2, we're just gonna play Bishop to g3 check, and after King to g1, there's uh, I mean uh, your entire position is uh, completely busted. There's no good way to play this. Uh, everything is hanging and. I mean, uh, even if you had something, this rook will never see the light of day. It's just one of the sadder positions that we've ever shown on the channel. And if you don't capture with the rook, if you capture with the king, it's not much better because now bishop b5 check, and after king f2, again bishop g3, uh, this is just uh, resigns. There's no good way to play this. King g1, uh, uh, queen to e8 going after e1. Uh, it's uh, just d disgusting to even look at this position. Uh, but okay, after knight to d1, Rajabov just brought the rook back, rook to e8, uh, you can, you know, if you threw pieces, uh, you know, with your uh, eyes closed, you would probably play a winning move here. <laughs> knight to e3, and now rook to b3, attacking the knight here, knight to g4, and now Rajabov just captures it. Bishop captures h, captures, and rook to c8, going after the queen here, queen to a1, and here uh, Rajabov just played bishop, to f4 and it was in this position on move 26 that Ding Liren resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. So a most uh, unusual turn of events, Ding after winning three games in a row loses with the white pieces uh, pretty much before move 20. He, he probably messed up his uh, preparation or something because it's uh, it's hard to believe that this is your, your attempt after, after you know basically snowballing the second half of the tournament and now now you just uh, play this. It's um, I have no idea what happened here. Uh, we will have to wait for Ding to clarify in the, in an interview, perhaps. But uh, what, whatever. I mean, of course, Rajabo played brilliantly. Uh, not saying that, but uh, Ding with the white pieces to lose like this. This is uh, you know once or twice in a lifetime that that something like this could happen. Uh, so yeah, really impressive stuff. Uh, here you resign. Uh, you don't really have a move. The rook can't really move away from the defense of the bishop. Uh, and if you capture the bishop uh, we're just gonna play queen captures on f4 attack the rook and once you move the rook then just everything falls apart knight captures on g4 check king to f1 now even rook captures on f3 you can play this position any way you want queen captures king e1 or g1 then we capture this rook or uh, e1 then we capture this rook with check king to d2 for example queen h6 check we don't trade queens here king to e1 and now let's say pawn to d4 and there is no move here for white quickly yeah, you will you will check the white king of course the pawn cannot be captured as rook to c1 the bishop is needed here to cover this square uh, there just aren't any moves here for for ding to make so of course he knows this after bishop to f4 he resigns and an, a brilliant brilliant victory for Timur Rajabov in round 12 of the FIDE candidates tournament uh, so this is a tough uh, tough break for Ding uh, he does not get closer to, to Yanni Pomnishi as if you guys remember these were the standings before oops <laughs> the, the, uh, this were the standings after uh, the previous round so Ding was um, uh, one and a half points behind Nepo so now he remains here but Rajabov jumps from five to six and now uh, well uh, it might be a bit difficult. Uh, we're going to wait for uh, the other games to finish and then we're going to show the standings after round 12 uh, because it's uh, it's not going to be easy to catch uh, Nepo now. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would uh, like to thank uh, Michael Kov, uh, Hope uh, Consulting, Alan Chevalier Moore, uh, Obrad Mishkovic, Jeffrey Cook, and Abhishek Babui for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon. Continue the coverage of the candidates tournament uh, until it finishes. Uh, thank you all, I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.